Today's show and the following message are brought to you by AgriScience Labs, the largest, most established cannabis testing network in Colorado. To find out how you can get the most accurate and reliable test results, visit agriscience.com. The companies in those phases are typically growing extremely quickly and raising meaningful capital can be a full-time job as is a company that's growing very quickly. Uh, so in in those instances, it is a better use of the management's time to focus on building the business and let folks that are professionals at raising capital do exactly that. From Bumminet Media, it's the MJ Bulls Podcast, a show about raising cannabis capital. I'm Dan Homiston, and on today's show, part five in our series, Things to Know When Raising Cannabis Capital. Sumit Mehta and Brent Johnson from Mezzacali Advisors join us to talk from an investment banker's perspective. Today, we're continuing our series on things to know when raising cannabis capital. And to help us with that, we have Sumit Mehta and Brett Johnson from Mazakali to share their insights from an investment banker's perspective. Hey, Samit and Brent, how are you guys doing today? Doing well. Fantastic, man. Thanks for being on the MJ Bulls podcast. You know, this is going to sound like a really dumb question to start this off, but <laughs> what exactly do investment bankers do? Very simply put, we help companies raise capital and we help investors place capital. Like at what stage should a company that's considering raising capital, what stage do they bring you in? The rungs of the capitalization ladder certainly move from self-funding to friends and family to maybe some angel investors. When companies have some traction, they have positioning in the marketplace and they're looking for capital to expand. Typically between the bridge and series rounds is when they would start looking for outside assistance for those capital raises. Define bridge for our listeners. Sure, it's the round that typically connects what would be considered a series round to an angel funding round and a company that's looking to bridge their capital needs until they get to that series A race are the companies that we're describing. So a company okay. that an example of a company we typically would work with is one that's raising north of five million with an intended dilution of no more than twenty five percent. So that's about the time that they should bring on a professional people that do this for a living to help them with this process. And one of the reasons now, I'm just jumping ahead here, but one of the reasons I'm assuming is because we get into some pretty sophisticated stuff as you move up the ladder, as you said. That's correct. There's also another reason, which is that the companies in those phases are typically growing extremely quickly and raising meaningful capital can be a full-time job as is a company that's growing very quickly. So in those instances, it is a better use of the management's time to focus on building the business and let folks that are professionals at raising capital do exactly that. What are some of the things that you require them to do to get ready for the capital raise or the next raise? Well, there's a host of services we provide our clients that would fall under the investment banking umbrella. Certainly capital cadence, capital planning and deal structuring are a very important part of what we do but also building models and building pitch decks and understanding valuation and understanding the split on how best to raise equity, when best to raise equity, how much debt to add onto the balance sheet, and how to position the company out of the marketplace uh, would all fall on, on, onto that list of things that we do with our clients. So a lot of those things that normally would fall into the client's plate, you guys will take care of like a pitch deck. I know that could be just putting together a pitch deck is very, very time consuming. And that's why working with an investment banking firm like like Mazzucali is very helpful and takes that pressure away. Is that correct? Certainly, we come from uh, finance backgrounds and collectively we've spent over 100 years on Wall Street and we understand and speak that language. We also have spent a lot of time in the cannabis space and have been investors and participants in it for for years as well. So understanding both communities, understanding how to bridge what companies are trying to express with what investors understand is crucial in getting those conversations uh, maturing to the point of investment. Yeah, and you brought up a point that you are familiar with the cannabis industry. I suspect it's pretty important to make sure that you're working with one that has at least some experience in cannabis. Can you expand on that a little? Well, cannabis is a true emerging market, and as such, it exhibits many of the qualities of emerging markets. Qualities such as fragmentation, fractionation, and certainly a large 
level of opacity of information. And when you have all of the restrictions placed on top of that with advertising and such, you have a marketplace that is rife for misinformation. You also have a marketplace because of fragmentation that has at least 12,000 licensed businesses and perhaps 20,000 unlicensed businesses. And when you have an industry that's growing at 27 percent, it doubles in size every 32 months. Wow. And so if we're looking at 32,000 businesses that are all growing at a very fast clip, we're also looking at 32,000 investment opportunities. And it is crucially important for folks to understand the industry, understand the moving parts, and understand where the best use of capital is in order to do service to the investors who are ultimately providing the fuel that's going to build this plane. Just a quick thank you to one of our sponsors. Bridgewest LLC is one of the first accounting firms in the world to focus solely on the cannabis industry and is your one-stop provider for accounting, audit, tax, and advisory service. They're offering a free 30-minute intro call to one of their leadership teams to all MJ Bulls listeners. Go to bridgewestcpas.com and now back to the show. So after a deal is closed, is there a role for post-closing for an investment banker? Yeah, no, it's actually, uh, you know, once, once the deal is closed, I mean, often these companies are raising money in multiple raises. And so uh, we definitely stay in close contact with the company. They typically have additional capital advisory needs, which we assist with. And uh, assuming that we successfully raise money for a company, they likely engage us for future raises. So it's certainly a long-term relationship. So in other words, once a lot of times, once they start down the track of raising capital, it's not a once one and done deal. Usually there are second, third, fourth rounds that need assistance. Yeah, again, it just depends on uh, how, you know, how the company's growing, how fast it's growing, how their revenues are growing. But yeah, I mean, typically there are, I mean, like Suman said earlier, there are the earlier fundraisers, friends and family, angel money, some seed money. But it's not unusual for a company to do a, you know, a Series A, Series B, maybe even a Series C before they either, they either get acquired or uh, take the company public. So before we wrap, can you tell us a little bit more about Mezzacali and how our listeners can get in touch with you if they have any questions? Sure. Uh, our, our website is uh, certainly the best place to learn more about our company. Mazakali is, an, is a cannabis investment banking platform. Uh, we publish research under the term green papers. Those are all also available on our website. Our intent is certainly to help listeners get educated and get advised and ultimately get invested. Your email address is submit at mazakali.com. Well, all this information will be on the MJ Bulls website. And if anybody has any questions, I'm sure Smith will be happy to get back to you. Smith and Brett, thanks so much for demystifying the world of investment banking for our listeners. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for all you do for the industry. Thank you. Good luck. Just a quick thank you to one of our sponsors, Trevitt Hill. Managing and supporting a cannabis investment is both time consuming and expensive. Trevitt Hill provides cannabis investors with an external team to help their investment reignite growth. To learn more, go to trevithill.com. Thanks for listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. To learn more about today's guests or to apply to be a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. And if you like our show, give us a review on iTunes. Today's show was produced by Bumminit Media. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the MJ Bulls podcast.